Hey guys, this is Angela from We Are Family Homeschoolers, and today's video is a combination of my second and third grade curriculum choices for the 2021-2022 school year. Some of this curriculum I have already done reviews on other videos, so I will pop the links in at the top of the screen and also down in the description box for you to enjoy and get a better look at. And I wanted to give a quick word on grades. So we have always been homeschoolers. This is my 12th year. I move my kids ahead in grades um, if they've put in a year of work. Doesn't mean that they've excelled to the next skill level. If they've been working for a year, they go up to the next grade. Um, I also have a third grader who is a very young third grader and she's only a year apart from my to-be second grader. So in public school, they would actually both be going into second grade. So one of them's probably working in the beginning of the book, the other one's working in the end of the book, and that's fine. Um, I like curriculum like Learning Language Arts Through Literature, which we call LATL. It's a complete language arts program. And Math You See, because they're color-coded, they're not grade coded, so your child can work wherever their skill level fits, and they don't have to feel bad if, if they're behind a level, um, and if they're ready, you can skip ahead to the next level. So that's just a confidence builder right there. Both of those curriculums are made for kids with multiple learning styles, so they're very flexible and you can make them fit almost any child. Okay, so what we're going to be going over is the Laddle Red Book, which will be for my third grader, and the Laddle Blue Book, which will be for my second grader. And these are the readers that come with the Red Book, this stack of literature here, and I'll go through all this in a minute. And these are the readers the student will go through. And for the Laddle Blue Book, they have a stack of real literature and they have a stack of short vowel readers and bridge readers and long vowel readers, some sight word flash cards, consonant letter cards, vowel cards, letter blend cards, uppercase letter cards, and you actually play games with all these cards um, so it makes it fun. They have sound cards with pictures and these are called head and toe and tummy cards. So if you're giving your child the word cat and you say, what is the k sound? They would give you a head card. If you say, what is the a ah sound? They'd give you a tummy card. If you say, what is the t sound? They would give you the toe card. So it's helping them to learn beginning, middle, and ending sounds. And there's all games for that written in the book. Um, the Blue Laddle book, I've already done a really nice review on, so I will link that video for you in just a minute here. Then we're going to have Health, Safety, and Manners 2. This is by Rebecca, and I'll flip through that one for you. We're moving into Beta, Matthew C. for the third grader, Multiple Digit Addition and Subtraction. And Alpha, which will be for my second grader. Now, my second grader has just been diagnosed ADHD with um, some learning difficulties in reading. I don't know how accurate that is because she's been doing really well with the LATL program. I think she just has anxiety and she's pretty hyper. So, so far, Matthew C. and the LATL have really helped her with that. The 100 Easy Bible Verses I will flip through for you. That's a fun school journal. And God's Design for Heaven and Earth for Beginners. I will link a video that will show you that review because we're doing that with an older sister. And Our Spangled Story by Knotgrass, it's a whole curriculum set with a timeline book and an activity book and rhymes and rhythms book and a whole stack of readers. And like I said, we are doing that with an older sister, so I will link that review so that way this video we can just concentrate on the red ladle, the health, and the math. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I've moved the blue ladle out of the way so we can focus on the red ladle for now. 
This is second edition. They do have a third edition out, which is a little bit nicer, but, um, you know, I already have this one marked up, so this is what I'm going to stay with for this year. So, Laddle covers phonics, reading, spelling, grammar, vocabulary, handwriting, and higher order thinking skills. So, it really is an all-in-one curriculum. Unless you wanted to add on a little extra handwriting, if your student really struggles with spelling, you could add that on, but it's not necessary. There's so much hands-on work in this curriculum that I think if you move at your child's pace, you'd be just fine. All these tabs on the book stand for when I need to pop in those literature selections. This is what the inside of the book looks like. So it's going to go day by day of what's inside the student book, minus the pictures, and it's going to throw answers in there for you. So all these words in bold are the answers. So you can literally follow along in your book as your child works through their book. It's pretty simple. Okay. The literature that comes with Red Laddle is Little Bear, and these are the books you read to your child. Unless, of course, they're advanced readers and they can read them. A Tree is Nice, The Bravest Dog Ever, Balto, The Fire Cat, this one's pretty old, I had this one when I was a kid, The Ox Cart Man, Corduroy, The Little Island, Billy and Blaze, Harry the Dirty Dog, and Abraham Lincoln by the Dale Lairs. So it's a really nice literature pack. Um, there's a lot of critical thinking involved in here. Not, not exactly book studies, but you definitely talk about them a lot and get your child involved in the story. Okay, this is what a lesson looks like in the student book. Oh, real quick, this is what your child reads. Famous people, there's multiple stories in here. And that's what that looks like. Underwater friends, up, down, and around the rain tree, in, out, and about catfish pond, forest fables, and all around the farm. Again, the book will tell you which story to read and when. There are activities based on every story. In the third edition, they did replace a couple readers. So you'll have a couple different readers if you buy Laddle now. Because um, they're not making the second edition anymore unless you can find it in the clearance section. So this is what a lesson looks like. You start out with a literature passage. So this is a poem. And you talk to your teacher about it, and then you're going to look at the first verse, underline two words that rhyme, look at the second verse, underline two words that rhyme. Okay, so you're working on rhyming words here. There's some spelling tips, some fast phonics, some phonics facts. Over here, you're going to write three facts about kangaroos. Um, it tells you to find page 49, cut out the picture, do the project, which is... Right here, you're going to glue the pouch on the kangaroo. Here, you're going to work on a poem about mice. And then, whenever it says talk to your teacher, there's instructions in the teacher's book about what you should be asking them. Okay, so here it gives you um, instructions. You go back to the literature passage using a red pencil. Find a word that describes mice's tails. With a blue pencil, underline the word that describes their faces. With a green pencil, underline the word that describes their ears. With a yellow pencil, underline the word that describes their teeth. Okay, discussion with your teacher. Read some words. More phonics facts. The sounds of why. Um, you're going to go to page 53 and cut out some cards and play some games. It's a brain booster fact versus opinion likes and dislikes, another poem, another activity, some sight words, which sight word goes best with these sentences. These are um, the activity pages, so they're labeled, and you cut them out, and you would, I glue them onto a piece of paper, 
So you, they want you to put them in columns for the long E sound, the long I sound, and the Y sound like yard, so the Y sounds. And here they're going to do something similar with these words. There's a phonics word box. Um, I went through this entire book. I underlined every time I need to bring in a real book. So this is a story from Little Bear. And then we have a discussion with teacher. It's another activity to cut out. Um, if she gets tired of all the cutting out, I will help her. Now you don't do all this in one day. Here's a grammar guide, punctuation, point to review. Um, yeah, so context clues, understanding stories. Okay, so this number five here is actually day five. So, oh, and here's day four. So day four is reading a story, going over this little grammar page and the context clues, and that's it. And then day five is reading another story about Little Bear, cutting out some word cards, and doing this grammar guide on plurals. And then we're going to look at this story, this picture and cut out these sentences and put them in the order we think the story should go in and work on some sight words and that's day five. So the lesson should take about 20 minutes. So here's a number one. So it's a whole new lesson. Um, I got threw off a little bit because every time they put in these activities you need to cut out, I don't pay attention to the number of the days. But your kids will not let you move on when they see a new number. They'll be like, Mom, we're done for the day. So here's the number two. So that's the second day. So that's how that works. Um, about 20 minutes, depending on how long they take for the activity. And you have covered all of your language arts topics. Okay, moving on to health. We're using a Becca Health Safety Manners 2 for both girls. And I'll give you a look inside here. I have the old books from the 80s, so I thought it was time to update what I have. So we have nutrition, building healthy meals, building healthy habits, what happens at the doctor's office, some activities. Over here we have safety under construction, safety in my home, safety away from home, um, car safety, bus safety, sport safety, water safety, storm safety. Uh, those are really important. I like those. And the whole entire section on manners. I love the manners. Um, I learned a lot from this when I was a kid. So the lessons are colorful in the new books. I think they're short and sweet. We'll probably do this one day a week. Um, when we get, so we'll just basically read and talk this over. If we get to a nice review page, let's see if I can find one, that has a chart or a graph on it or something, then I will photocopy it out and have them fill it out. So let me see if I can find one like this. So if they need to chart the foods that they're eating for the week or take a little quiz, I will photocopy that. They'll fill it out and then we'll keep that in their binders. And that's how we show the state we did help. Okay, so in the back of this book, they start their safety lessons, which is, you know, a lot of the stuff you tell your kids all the time. Don't run around the pool. Don't stick your fingers in the light sockets. Um, this is how they do manners. They actually have a story so the kids can relate to the emotions of the characters and what happens when you know, make wrong decisions or have bad behavior. So those are really cute stories. Um, I think the kids will understand those. Um, it does have some character traits in here, like cheerfulness and obedience, having joy. There's always discussion, learning to help. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a quick read. It's not a big book. It's pretty thin. Okay, moving on to math. 
Okay, here is the Matthew C. Beta that I will be using for my young third grader. Um, there is a test book, so we would watch a video in the beginning of the week. It's usually about five minutes long. Um, they say the parent's supposed to watch it and then teach it to the student, but I just have my student watch it with me because I like the way he teaches. Um, there is a chart in the beginning of the book where you can check off the lessons you did and you can record your tests. So here are the topics that it'll cover. Let's see if you can see that. Place values, sequencing, inequalities, rounding to 10, multiple digits, skip count by twos, regrouping, skip count 10, skip count 5, monies round to 100, add money, column addition, measure foot, perimeter, thousands, round to thousands, multiple digit addition, um, time in minutes and regrouping, time in hours, subtraction of three digit numbers, ordinal numbers, subtraction four digit numbers, subtraction of money, subtraction multi digit, reading, what is that? Oh, gauges and graphs. So the first section of the book is addition, the second half of the book is subtraction. So it's really a mastery program. Um, they're still using the blocks in this book, which um, you can see that in my Matthew C. videos. I didn't get the blocks out today. So here you would build the numbers. Here you would, your child would say that's 100, and this is 40, and this is 6, so 146. So it starts them out pretty easy, doing some review of what they did the year before. And then it's getting into the double digits and estimations. So let me show you how I go through a lesson. The G pages are always optional. Matthew C is not Common Core. It never has been, and they didn't change the way that they do their lessons. But the G pages are enrichment, and so sometimes that goes along with Common Core curriculum. So if you are in a state where you have to take a Common Core math test at the end of the year, do the G pages. If you don't have to do any Common Core testing, you can do the G pages for fun, or you can totally skip them. So, lesson 5A. Watch a video, do your lesson. It's two pages. It's black and white. There's plenty of room for writing. There's no distractions. Lesson B is all the new stuff. If my kids get through lesson A and B, and they're just flying through it, and this is so easy, we'll skip C. If it's not easy for them, we do see. Lesson D has the new stuff on one page and then it's review. Never skip the review. So there's a little bit of spiral learning in that. Remember when we learned how to do this. Um, if they do perfect on lesson D, we'll go to test. If they struggle with some of the review, we continue with E because it has review and F also has review. Like I said, G is the optional page, it's the fun page, it sometimes has some Common Core concepts in it, not all the time. Um, so you don't have to take a full year to get through this book. If your student is getting it, then you just move on. Um, you don't need to sit on a concept forever if it's easy for them. So I do math the traditional way and Matthew C. teaches it a visual way. So you can use both traditional and the visual way that they do it on the videos. Whatever works best for your child. Sometimes the child just needs to see both ways and then they get it and then they can, you know, do it whatever method works for them. Um, that's why it's called Matthew C. So here's all the subtraction. They actually build this clock with the blocks um, it really helps them if they're visual learners to know that every section is a is a five block, and then they can just count by fives. Um, lots of word problems. Okay, and so that is what beta looks like. And they have temperature and gauges and graphs in the back of the book. Okay, moving on to alpha. Okay, alpha, single digit addition and subtraction. This is what my second grader will be working on because she's ADHD and has some anxiety, so she just needs 
nice and slow progression. So we're not going to rush, we're just going to focus on building her foundation and then when she's ready to fly, we'll let her move as fast as she wants to. So this is what this covers. Place value, counting to 20, using the blocks, counting by hundreds and tens, add two, add nine, add eight, shapes, doubles, counting by fives, doubles, making 10, making nine, and then the second half of the book is all subtraction. So here she is coloring in the blocks, so here she needs to color in three hundreds, and two of the tens, and four of the ones, and say that number, and here she is building them with the blocks for you to see. And we're not skipping any lessons with um, the second grader right now because she she really needs them. You can cut these cards out and play games with them. I haven't done that yet, um, but the video shows you how to do that. And here's counting to 20. This really helps with number reversals because it's a lot of practice. So lessons are short, two pages. You're done in 15 to 20 minutes. Matthew C. says never teach a lesson for more than 25 minutes. If you're teaching to the point of exhaustion and tears, your child's not going to want to do math the next day. These are the G pages. So just, you know, connecting the dots. Here she's learning the colors of the blocks. If they memorize the colors of the blocks, they'll get addition and subtraction really fast. It just helps them to not have to count on their fingers for the rest of their lives. And then eventually they just start memorizing it. So word problems. Double digit, triple digit addition with tens and hundreds. You're solving for the unknown, adding using blocks, you're learning your number words, shapes, this is just a quick and easy chapter, so if you do every lesson page plus the test, it'll take about eight days to complete one lesson unless your child wants to throw that G page on with their F lesson then you could you know shorten it up by a day but like I said there's no rush we're in the second half of the book now so um, more word problems subtraction I love the word problems some of them uh, carry on the story so it's a multiple step problem but um, they break it down for your child so they're not overwhelmed so, I like that. Okay. So, that is Alpha. There are tests at the end of the unit that are pretty simple. Um, every lesson is about 18 to 20 problems. And um, this works really well for my ADHD kids. I have two of them. Uh, the pages are clear and uncluttered, so... That works for them. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we do family Bible. I'm not sure what our topics will be this year, but I also wanted them to have um, Bible verses to write. Three of my daughters have the same fun schooling journal that you can get on funschooling.com. They also sell them on Amazon. Uh, I did explain this briefly in my seventh grade video, but I'll show it real quick here. So it's about two pages. You read your verse three times, write down three of your favorite words from the verse, draw a picture of the verse, copy the verse, color if you feel like coloring. Here's a little bit of spelling and just a coloring page. Another verse, three favorite words, illustrate, copy the verse. Now my second grader, well she'll be second grade in the fall, she has a hard time writing that verse, so I have her write the first half of the verse. Um, that takes a lot of concentration for her. And then I'll write the second half of the verse, and she'll just trace it. There's some more spelling. So there's 100 verses in this journal, and this is just something that, that they can mostly do on their own. I'll read, I'll read the verse with all three of them at the same time, and then hopefully they can read it to me by the third time, those that are reading well. 
So that's that. Pretty simple. Okay, so next we have God's Design, Heaven and Earth for Beginners Science. I did do a nice review on that in my 7th grade video, so I will link that for you to go check out. And our Star Spangled Story um, from Not Grass History and all of the extra books that go with it. The literature package is totally optional. I'm not sure if we will get to much of it this year. We are expecting our 8th baby the end of October. So we're going to take it nice and slow. We might take a year and a half to complete the program, um, or we might get done in a year. Even if it takes two years, um, I'm not worried. I've learned to be relaxed, and um, I also have another fun school. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> I also have another fun school journal for the three girls that are doing most of their school together. Um, this will be used if I have a hard time recovering from the birth of my eighth baby. This is something that they can partially do on their own and an older sibling can help them with. I have a whole stack of brand new books on horses for them. And um, my daughter started this when she was six and I didn't print out the whole journal, but I'll just give you a glimpse of what it looks like. So the website is funschoolingbooks.com Actually, I don't think the books is on there, but um, by Sarah Janice Brown. And this journal covers reading, handwriting, creative writing, spelling, classical music, mathematics, science, history, art, drawing, library skills, unit studies, and logic games. So if they just did this and threw in a math book, um, they could get by for a few weeks while I was recovering. Um, so they would draw five things they want to learn about horses. And then you go get your books from the library, which I actually bought a lot of books. I got some Usborne books and some DK books and things. Um, then she writes down the book, the books that she's going to be reading or that I would read to her or an older sibling. And then the coloring page. Five facts about me, to-do list, how are you feeling, draw and doodle something. Um, this is a logic puzzle, so you fill in what's missing on the second picture. And this is the reading time, so we read one of the horse books, so we did the white stallion, and then she told me what she got out of it, and she drew some pictures. It's a color journal. My printer was almost out of ink, so we didn't get the green grass. Um, here you take a nature walk and draw something you see outside. There's cursive practice. She didn't get to this page yet. Um, she hasn't started cursive yet. Here's spelling time. Look in your books for ten words that start with this letter. So you have to pick a letter first. And you can go through your horse books or any book you want. This is tracing and coloring. Movie time. So you could do a, a movie or documentary on horses, or you can pick something on history or science, uh, something that they want to learn. And then they draw it or write about it and, um, you know, color and face. What did you think about the movie? Give it a rating. Math and design time. So use this graph paper for math practice, lessons, uh, stable designs, or notes. So they could draw pictures, they could illustrate what they're learning in their math books, or write some of their own stuff. So, and that's that's about all I printed out, but it's a huge journal, um, so if I need to print out about 50 more pages or so to, to get through my postpartum stage, then I'll do that and just have them work on the fun school journal and the math with their older siblings, just so that they're uh, not going crazy with waiting for me to recover. So that is what I have for second and third grade for 2021-2022 um, school year. Make sure to check out my links in the box below so you can get the reviews on the history and the science and the blue ladle. Okay, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.